Now let's talk about the key derivation, in particular HD wallet. <clears throat> uh, so basically we want to derive multiple keys from the same seed. So from the previous step we got the seed that is 64 bytes long and we want to derive arbitrary amount of uh, new private keys from this seed and use them for our addresses. So the most naive uh, way to do it is uh, probably let's just take the seed uh, let's hash it, let's say we use SHA-256 of the seed uh, and the index. We can just uh, concatenate the index. Uh, and it's, as an output we will get a 32-byte hash that we can use directly as our private key. Uh, and then corresponding public key will be private key times the generator point. Uh, okay, so this is uh, already a working derivation path, uh, derivation scheme, uh, but uh, actually we have a way better standard uh, that is much more flexible than just that, uh, even though this is uh, perfectly fine, but uh, still in the standard we have a uh, much better setup. So let's discuss how the standard works. Um, and what we have there is, as I said, we have the seed, uh, and this seed is split into parts. So first one is the uh, chain code, 32 bytes, and another one is the private key. Uh, so yeah, here they are. Uh, and this uh, basically makes our uh, HD private key. Uh, and corresponding public key is basically the same chain code and the public key that is just the private key uh, times the generator point. And now from this key, we can derive uh, children. So in uh, BIP32, I should write it here, BIP32, uh, we have two ways to define the children, for, to derive the children, children from the master key. So one is the hardened, and another one is non-hardened. So I will first uh, talk about the non-hardened derivation because then you will see why, uh, well, how exactly it works and uh, what is not available in the hardened case and why hardened keys are better in some cases than non-hardened. Uh, okay, and uh, then basically when we, yeah, uh, let's take our seat or our chain code and the private key uh, and let's say we want to derive a children of the index index. So what we do, uh, we uh, put our chain code and the public key uh, concatenated with the index into the hash function. So hmark SHA-512 is basically uh, just SHA-512 with the chain code prepended and appended and XORed with some constants. Uh, so in principle it's just hashing with uh, SHA-512. So the result of this function will be uh, a 64-byte string. Mm sequence of bytes uh, that we again split into parts. So the first 32 bytes are going to the chain code again. Uh, this will be the chain code of our child uh, key. Uh, and our private key we mm, tweak by the second part of the result. Uh, so basically we take the parent private key and add to it the, um, the second part of the HMAC. So basically this means that the child child private key uh, equal to parent private key uh, plus this r32 and further. Uh, then corresponding public key will be uh, just this child private key multiplied by the generator point. This means that it will be the public key uh, of the parent uh, plus r times generator point. Okay, uh, this means that if we give out the master public key to our software wallet, uh, it will it has all necessary information to derive the uh, new public key, the child, the child public key, because he can just take the chain code, uh, the public key with the index, hash it together, and add to the parent public key this uh, result times the generator point. Great. Uh, so. This is pretty good for uh, this watch-only uh, software wallet, uh, where we can just uh, send our uh, master public key and then they will be able to uh, derive and monitor the blockchain for the money uh, that we receive. Uh, and still they don't have uh, the private keys to sign or to steal our funds. Um, the only problem here is that 
if for some reason uh, we leak a single private key of the pair of the child uh, let's say uh, one of these private keys somehow leaked to uh, to the software wallet. So if the software wallet knows the uh, parent uh, master public key and a single ch child private key, he can actually derive the private key of of the well, not not of the parent, sorry, uh, of all other neighbors. So like uh, for example, if we take uh, the child with an index. I uh, and this guy leaked, so the uh, this wallet knows now the chain code, uh, and he also knows the uh, private key of the uh, of the eighth uh, child of this uh, of this master private master private key. Uh, so then, if you want to calculate uh, the private key of the this child of this master uh, private key, uh, what we need, we need uh, the um, master private key. Yeah, actually, we can even calculate the uh, master private key of the parent, because what we what we use, we have this uh, private key of the eighth child, uh, that is uh, parent private key plus uh, our. 32 blah. So we, having the knowledge of the chain code and the public key, can calculate this hash. Therefore, we know this, uh, and we know also the this the private key. So we can derive the um, private key of the parent, uh, and this means that we can uh, therefore uh, compromise the whole tree. So we can uh, get the private keys of all the neighbors. This is why non-hardened derivation is uh, a little bit dangerous. Uh, but, well, normally if you store your private keys on the hardware wallet, then you don't leak your private keys to the software wallet. Well, never. Uh, and if there is some hack or something, then it is easier just to get the root key and that's it. Okay, so then <clears throat> uh, what we can... Uh, Another thing that uh, BIP32 introduces is the hardened derivation. So the hardened derivation is a little bit harder, and in particular it uh, avoids this attack that I just described, and also it, uh, this means that uh, the master public key is completely useless uh, if you are using hardened derivation. Uh, so what happens in the hardened derivation is we start with uh, the same structure, we have the chain code and the private key, uh, and then into the hash we put the private key, uh, the chain code, and the private key. So instead of the public key that we had before, we put the private key and we uh, prepend zero, 00 there, just to make sure that this thing is uh, 33 bytes, always. Uh, and then the index that uh, actually should be converted into the four, four bytes uh, sequence. Uh, okay, and uh, this means that uh, this hash can be calculated only if you know the private key. This means that the um, derivation uh, from the master public key cannot happen. Yeah, so this is uh, the thing. Okay, so this is the hardened derivation, non-hardened derivation. Hardened derivation, in principle, is uh, a little bit more secure, but also less flexible. As usually, you, as usual, you have compromises. Uh, now let's talk about the common derivation patterns. So uh, we see here that every child key is actually also the master key for for his child. So basically we can uh, continue here we derived uh, one child, then we can derive uh, next child and so on. So we can uh, build a pretty complicated structure. Uh, and there are a few recommendations how this derivation path should be used. And these uh, recommendations are described in uh, BIP44, BIP49 and BIP84. So basically this helps the software wallet uh, to understand better for uh, for what kind of scripts uh, it should uh, monitor the blockchain. Uh, for example, uh, BIP44 uh, BIP uh, describes uh, that uh, if you are using the path that is M44 harder than 0, then uh, 0, and then uh, something and uh, index, this are already non-hardened, then uh, it is probably a legacy address, so you want to monitor for scripts that are paid to uh, public key hash. Uh, then uh, BIP84 is uh, used for <coughs> uh, 
uh, for segwit addresses and bip49 is for nested segment uh, and it is nothing but a convention so it's just a recommendation because public keys are, can be used however you want and these derivation paths are just the uh, agreement between developers how to uh, how to derive uh, new keys and not all the uh, software implementations uh, use these derivation paths for example uh, bitcoin core always use hardened derivation and they don't use this they use some uh, other indexes. Uh, Green Wallet, I suppose, is also not following it because it is Blockstream and uh, also related to Bitcoin Core pretty much. Uh, but many others actually do follow this uh, standard, so you know what to um, uh, look, uh, well, what to search for when you see a particular derivation path. Uh, and uh, in principle, the structure is the following. So the first index is the purpose of this thing. So like 84 or 44 and 49 is defining what type of uh, script uh, is probably used for this particular public key. Uh, then the next index is the coin. So zero is for Bitcoin, uh, one is for testnet. Uh, and uh, all the shitcoins are using other indexes, so there is even a huge table of uh, altcoins, uh, what indexes they should use. Uh, then we have accounts, so for example, if you want to uh, have multiple wallets that are unrelated to each other um, from the same seed, then we can just uh, use different indexes for the accounts, but most of the software implementations are always using zero and uh, yeah, don't uh, really support accounts. Uh, and then uh, the last two indexes are non-hardened, so this means that if you give the uh, master public key of this guy, uh, then your software wallet will be able to derive uh, new receiving addresses and change addresses and in principle uh, construct the transactions for you and so on. Uh, so uh, the uh, first non-hardened ch child um, index uh, is defining whether it is a change or not. So zero means receiving and one means uh, change address. Uh, and then the last one is just the index that you increase every time when you need to generate a new address. Um, then uh, another thing is how do we actually represent these HD wallets for uh, so like you probably saw when you uh, import the uh, master public key it looks like xpop and, the, and then some stuff so in principle it is a uh, base uh, 58 encoded string uh, that uh, all the software implementations uh, understand uh, and it is also like in printable characters so uh, better than robots. Uh, so what do we do there? Uh, basically we uh, construct the following structure. Uh, first we use uh, the prefix and this prefix uh, basically uh, shows uh, what network uh, are we using? So uh, in BIP32, the only thing that is defined is that uh, okay, we we should use a certain prefix for master keys uh, on the mainnet, and it, this means that it will end up with a, when serialized uh, to the XPRV in the beginning or XPUB for the public key, and then we should use a different prefix for the testnet, and then it will be serialized as TPRV and uh, TPUB. Uh, then uh, the next uh, thing that we put there is the depth. So like in the structure, if we have the root, it is like uh, level zero. Uh, then we uh, have a first children, uh, first child that is uh, level one, then another one level two, uh, and another one level three. Uh, so if we look at uh, BIP84, for example, this will be 84, zero, zero. So then the uh, third uh, child will be our master private key and therefore the depth will be 3. Uh, then we have a parent fingerprint uh, just uh, to help the uh, implementation uh, either software or hardware uh, to connect uh, to the parent key. Uh, so it's not uh, the fingerprint of the root, it is a fingerprint of the parent. So like if we are encoding this guy then we should take the fingerprint of, uh, of this thing, uh, of this parent. Uh, so the fingerprint is, cal is calculated pretty easily, so you just take hash 160. Uh, hash 160 it means uh, that it is uh, RIPMD uh, 160 of uh, uh, SHA-256 of the, 
of something and in this particular case we take the public key of the parent. Uh, so we hash the public key of the parent, we end up with 20 bytes um, uh, result and from this 20 bytes we take uh, 4 bytes as a fingerprint. Um, then uh, we have the chain code, we discussed it before, and then we have the key. And the key is either just the public key, in case of the uh, master public keys, uh, or it is 00, zero and the private key, uh, zero, 00 because uh, public key is serialized as 33 bytes, private key is serialized as 32 bytes, and we want this structure to have the fixed length, so we take uh, zero, 00 and uh, private key here. Uh, okay, and then in this uh, BIP44, 49, and 84, uh, well, it was not actually defined there, it was defined in one of the slips, Satoshi uh, Web's improvement pr proposals. Uh, so they suggested to use different prefixes for different purposes. So for uh, 49, for example, for nested segwit, uh, we use another prefix that uh, ends up with uh, when we encode such a master public key or private key, we end up with YPRV and YPUB. Then for uh, for testnet, it will be uh, therefore UPRV and UPUB. And for uh, native segwits, uh, they use another prefixes and so we end up with ZPRV and ZPUB. And therefore VPRV and VPUB. Um, yeah. Uh, then there are also two other prefixes for multi-signature, but it is not really defined in the BIP, and it is, uh, well, it's defined in the slip, I think. Uh, there is a path, something like 48, 0, 0, and either 1 or 2, depending if you want to use nested segwit or native segwit. Uh, and uh, the prefixes change such that you end up with capital Y uh, PRV and uh, capital Y pop, and uh, therefore Z PRV and ZPUB. Um, yeah, so these are the prefixes. Also, not all implementations are using these prefixes. Bitcoin Core again doesn't do it uh, because they don't uh, follow these beeps anyways. Um, and uh, I don't know what will happen next when we have Taproot and we kind of uh, don't have other letters anymore. So like Z is the last one. What should we do next? Uh, but um, yeah, we'll see when we have uh, Taproot and uh, uh, next version of the segment. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so now when we uh, discussed how uh, HD wallets work, uh, let's go and implement them. Uh, so I already have the Yupcho notebook uh, where I put the code from the previous part. Uh, so we connect to the board. Uh, we import everything that we need. I added here uh, BIP32 from Bitcoin. Uh, and also we mm, generate our entropy, we hash it, we convert it into phrase and seed, and we print all this stuff. So uh, here I decided to take uh, 256 bytes from the true random number generator, because why not? It's fast enough. Uh, and uh, then when we hash, we will end up with 32 bytes anyways, and then we take on the 16 bytes from that. Uh, but at least we will make sure, together with the ADC, uh, with 2048 uh, rounds of EDC measurements that we have a good enough randomness. Okay, so we end up with this recovery phrase uh, that we can take, um, damn it. Oop. We can take again to the, uh, to this web page and just insert it here. Uh, and here we see uh, different XPRV, XPUBs and uh, so on for the root. Oh, no, sorry, here is the root, uh, here is the account, uh, the, then here is the uh, receiving master public key, and then we have a bunch of addresses. Uh, and we can switch here to different uh, BIPs and have this YPRV and YPUBs and ZPRV and ZPUBs. And also we can switch to the testnet, oops, rec test, testnet. Uh, yeah, rec test is also using, and all testnet uh, networks are using uh, the same um, prefixes uh, and uh, the same derivation passes because just, yeah, uh, money that, uh, coins that don't worth anything. Okay, so then uh, what we want, we want to get this uh, master private key. Uh, and we also want to derive, let's say, uh, this legacy XPRV and XPUB. Uh, 
uh, or better maybe we use um, VP84 and derive uh, native segwit things. And let's do it for the test nets just because we can. Um, okay, uh, so now what we do, we uh, let's say see what is in BIP32. Uh, and basically here we have this HD key class. Uh, so our root will be HD key and it has the class method called uh, from seed and uh, we pass the seed there. Uh, and then if you want to uh, print it, well, we do root to base 58 uh, and so that's it. Uh, okay, so we need to be 32, add the key from seed. Yeah, so this is our private key. Let's uh, check if it is correct. Uh, so we switch to Bitcoin and we switch to uh, Bit44 uh, and right i forgot to enter the password so now if we search for this we got it as a root key great um, then let's derive uh, the key that is 84 1 0 84 1 0 yeah our master key so we go back to the testnet and let's see uh, so what we do our account uh, will be root derive uh, m84 hardenance. You can either use h or you can use uh, this quote mark. Uh, then we use one and then we use zero. So this is the purpose, the network, uh, and the account number. And then we again print um, account uh, to base 58 and we get this. So obviously the prefix here is not quite correct uh, because we didn't, well, by default it is always using the uh, master, uh, well, the prefixes from, um, for the main net uh, as defined in BIP32. Uh, but we can actually uh, tell the, uh, this, uh, this function that we want to use a different prefix. So for this purpose we have another thing that is uh, from Bitcoin networks import networks. Uh, I think it is also exposed in uh, BIP32, but still. Uh, and let's see what is inside. Uh, so this is basically a big dictionary that is defining for every network different uh, prefixes like uh, zprv, yprv, ypub and so on. So for example, we need the testnet. Um, here it is. Uh, and also let's see uh, how exactly we do it with this uh, account. So what we can do. Um, Okay, uh, we can go to this GitHub repo in the in the libraries in Bitcoin, and then BIP32 and see what other function there. Uh, so HD key uh, from seed, yeah, it can accept the version, and by default it takes the version from the mainnet and XPRV. Uh, then when we derive uh, the child derive. Uh, it uh, keeps it the same, okay? Uh, and when we do to base uh, 58, uh, then we also can define the version. So basically when we are serializing stuff, we can set the version here. So let's uh, set the version to networks uh, test and we want ZPRV, okay? Uh, so here we see that it actually converted into the VPRV because it is the test, right? So then here we search for it and we have this account extended private key uh, with VPRV. Great. Uh, now let's convert uh, this to the master public key because we don't want to give the private key to anyone. Uh, so what we do, uh, we do account to public and then uh, we can print the xpub to base 58 and the version will be uh, networks test um, zpub. 
Okay, so this is our uh, zpub, our master public key. Yeah, it is correct. Okay, great. So <clears throat> we derived the account, uh, and now we can also derive individual private keys. Uh, and uh, in principle, what we want is, let's say, to get the first address here. Uh, so let's use account. Um, so pub key. Uh, xpub derive m00. This will be our public key for the first receiving address. Um, and let's print the pub key. Um, yeah, so if we, we want to print like actual public key. Uh, so the internal structure of this public key is that we have a chain code there and we also have the key. Uh, so we, if we print the pub key dot key, so even uh, because this thing actually is the uh, still the master public key. So actually, if we want just a single pub key, then we can use just the key here. Um, okay. So if we print the key, then we have the public key, and this is the public key. Or alternatively, uh, what we can do, um, we can uh, just do sec because sec is the serialization uh, function for the public keys and even the master public key when uh, the sec is called uh, will serialize it as um, yeah uh, as just a public key and then we can use hex define and it will be basically the same uh, okay so let's compare um, yeah this is our first receiving uh, receiving public key uh, now to get to the actual address, we need to discuss the script and stuff, but just briefly to show you uh, from Bitcoin import script. Uh, and then what we can do to get the address, uh, we first need to construct the script from the public key. And in our case, we want to uh, construct the pay to witness pub key hash from the pub key. Uh, and uh, this will be our script and then we want to uh, ask for the address mm, yeah let's do it like this and then address is script address uh, and then let's print address uh, here is the address the only thing that it uh, doesn't know anything about the network code error so by default it is using the mainnet uh, and uh, if we want to uh, get it for the testnet, we need to pass uh, the test, the actual testnet um, as an argument. Uh, so uh, networks test. Yeah. So this is our first SegWit uh, receiving address, and here it is. Uh, everything is calculated correctly. Uh, great. Uh, in the next part, we will talk a little bit about the addresses, uh, SegWit addresses, addresses, nested legacy, and how they are calculated and what scripts they correspond to.